good morning or afternoon, whatever it is. And thank you, of course, for welcoming us into your studio. So tell us a little bit about you. Who are you and where are we? Well, my name is Karen Samuel. I am a sixth generation Virgin Islander. I'm from Coral Bay. I'm actually in my studio on my family property on I'm, you know, I've been around for a bit. I went to school here and then in St. Thomas. I taught high school at Uderakin for a couple of years. Then I stopped and I taught for like 30 years after that at St. John's School of the Arts, mostly after school classes. And then I went from after school classes into contract teaching at public and private schools. You know, it's, it's like a transition thing for me. The, mm -hmm between the teaching and what I plan to do in my retirement. Okay. I got the studio, I can work on my projects. Um, before the storms and before the pandemic, right. I could do private lessons. Mm -hmm. And um, it's pretty much what I always wanted to do. So right. it, it, you know, it, it was like a dream come true. And what made you choose art? I realized from the time I got to 10th grade that I was really good at art. I mean, the teachers would let me use oil paints and stuff that had been sitting in the storeroom for years. Okay. You don't teach high schoolers oil painting right. because it's, it's a pretty advanced technique. Okay. But they actually had paint supplies in the storeroom that nobody had ever used. Mm -hmm. And so my instructor pulled them out and gave me a couple tips and let me experiment with those. In a short period of time, I had had a bunch of shows. Okay. The people at Council on the Arts became aware of me. Mm -hmm. I did a couple shows there at their building on Norigata, mm -hmm. Francois building, it was upstairs. I did a show there, a one woman show there. They sponsored a show at the Catholic Church in Cruz Bay. And this is all when I was 14. Okay. Oh, wow. I also had a scholarship to go to Long Island University, Southampton College mm -hmm. for a summer art program. And I think that year they sent like 20 of us. I was 14, so okay. that would have been 73, okay. I think. And um, it was musicians and artists from, I mean, high school students mm -hmm. from the Tree Islands. And um, yeah, it's like, I, I don't know that they would do that stuff anymore. It's like, we kind of grew up at a good time. Right. There was money for all of this stuff. Mm -hmm. And I suppose to nowadays with all of the restrictions that some of the stuff wouldn't be possible anymore. Okay. It was a long time ago. But I mean, that's a guy, I mean, 14 year old, each of us was allowed to choose a college class. So there were people who chose pottery and this was public and private. Okay. And it was VICA sponsored or NEA sponsored. And um, mm. that was a fabulous experience as a 14 year old right. going off and staying in the dorms. And how did your family influence uh, the development of your art practice? Well, um, after I started developing my skills, it, mm -hmm. it was pretty clear to see that I had skills and my parents have always supported opportunities for growth and development. Right. I mean, it, it's kind of funny, again, to grow up in this type of small place. My father did manual labor for work, mm -hmm. but was a total intellectual. Right. He wanted to be a doctor, okay. but because he was the son who was most capable of doing the manual labor right. in his family, mm -hmm. his dreams got cut off. He had to help his father. Okay. The other brothers did other things, but they were not mm -hmm. the fence builders. And they, you know, my father was a property manager type okay. and his father needed that. Mm -hmm. So he had to stay and give up his dreams to help his father. Right. But because he was an intellectual, he would work. He'd be gone from four o'clock in the morning. He'd come home like three in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. He was managing Linster Bay for the Lockhearts. Okay. Yeah. And then when he came home, it was books and reading and classical music. Mm -hmm. So I, as, I think as kids, we just grew up with this notion of, and it's the title of a book, but, it, but the concept is the same. Mm -hmm. The land is our heritage. Right. You, and the fact that we own the fort where the slave rebellion took place, mm -hmm. that kind of has to influence you. Mm -hmm. How did it influence you? Well, I mean, I think it's all about this development of uh, personal pride. Okay. Personal pride, pride in ownership, pride in maintenance, pride in 
feeling that you have a legacy that you have to live up to. Mm. Okay? Right. I mean, I always thought that if we were going to go off and get college degrees, that it ought to be manifested in what we did in the community. Okay. What would you like to see done in the community or what would you like to do in the community? I just thought we should have been, before our culture got totally decimated with all of the new, the new population that we have, mm -hmm. I always thought that we should have been projecting more of our culture. Okay. That, you know, with the, his, with the local families that own historical sites, mm -hmm. that we should have been doing our own tours and our own reenactments mm -hmm. and our own training of young people in different related fields where we would control the image mm -hmm. and the message that went out. Right. Uh, because, it, I mean, it didn't take long for me going into art to see all the stereotypical stuff mm -hmm. that was out there. And, um, you know, before you could art articulate what it was about the stuff that bothered you, right. It bothered you. Mm -hmm. You knew uh, you knew there was something a little off about the depictions mm -hmm. of Caribbean people in art. Right. Coming in, you know, for, uh, f for the longest while, it was just market people, market people, market people. I actually resisted mm -hmm. painting market people because I was so sick of seeing these stereotypical depictions. Right. Every expat artist, this is what they did. Somebody with a basket on their head or, a, you know, and... I, I, I remember having a show at Chase Bank in Cruise Bay early on. And um, this is when some of the local women were the bank managers and this mm -hmm. and that. And there were a series of shows that were presented in the bank. And there were some other artists that had done shows before my show. Right. And when my show came, came into the bank, and when we were taking it down, I remember two of the ladies coming to me and they were two local women and they were like oh we're so glad we're so glad you have a show in the in the bank and they they were like they didn't feel comfortable with the depictions of locals that were there before oh, wow. and um hmm. that made me feel good right. because I, I i i used to rebel against it and i was like you know not being individualistic mm -hmm. in depictions of faces, you know, sometimes it would just be black features, all, all of the people look the same, just mix up of different noses and mouths and eyes, mm -hmm. and they never really look like real black people that you knew, right. kind of thing. Right. So there, were, there was some of that, and it took, it, it like actually took a while before black people were represented as real people, right. individual people. Right. And um, so all of that has colored how I think and what I do. Mm. What do you hope to convey with your art? Well, I, I mean, I really like local Sinjonian culture. Mm. I'm proud of our culture. Right. I think, I mean, and because I'm proud of our culture, I, I want to express that. Mm -hmm. We are proud, intelligent, salt of the earth people. Mm -hmm. We've got the best manners, the best hospitality. People take advantage of it. But I just think we're really, really good people and that's something to be celebrated. You also make really beautiful quilts. And so I'm wondering yeah. if you'll tell us a bit more about um, all of your different art forms. Well, it's, I mean, I get a little excited. Mm -hmm. I mean, like I said, I, I really, I go by moods. I'll paint for months at a time. If I need a breeder from that, I'll have some other hobby on the side. Mm -hmm. It could be crocheting, knitting, sewing. So, but I always have like three or four different projects going okay. at any time. At any time while I'm painting, I'm always either working on one of the other fiber or needle crafts. And you also used to um, design some of the gowns for VI oh. pageant queens, mm -hmm. if I recall, right? Oh, I mean, it, it was all based on what people asked me to do. Okay. So if a contestant came and they wanted a gown, I would do a gown. Okay. If it's a business suit, I'd do a business suit. I got into, for a couple of years, I was doing interview suits mm -hmm. and swimsuits. Pageant okay. swimsuits became a thing. And it's kind of fun. 
Mm -hmm. I mean, really fancy, elaborate cutouts, strings here, there, and everywhere. Mm -hmm. I like making creative things. Mm -hmm. I like the experience of trying to figure out how to get it done right. and getting it done to the point where it looks great, the customer is satisfied, and then I'm like, yeah. Right. So I like the process. Okay. Is there anything that I haven't asked that you would like to tell us? You know, I did at one point choose, even though I knew this was going to be a difficult career, mm -hmm. I chose it so that younger people coming up wouldn't, necess wouldn't limit themselves okay. by thinking that, oh, you can't be that hair. Right. You can. It ain't easy. You do have to know what the market bears. Mm -hmm. You want to have to do some self-promotion, but younger people are better at that anyway. Mm. So... It means that anybody, any student, any art student who sees my work should not have the restriction in their mind that I can't choose to be an artist right. if I'm going to live in the VI. Right. I wanted that to be gone. Okay. Because as I was studying when I was in high school, there were no examples for me. Hmm. I mean, there, were, there really were no examples. There were people who did artwork. They weren't shown. There was no visual artist that I could say, oh, that's somebody from here. Mm -hmm. And I decided I would be that just so. Because, you know, a lot of kids love art. Mm -hmm. All little kids love art. They'll do it all day long sometimes. Right. But people are always shooing you away from art. What advice would you give a young St. Jonian artist who wants to embark on their own path? I, I mean, I'm going to always encourage people to do what makes you happy. Okay. Regardless. Because you have to live with yourself. I do what I like doing. Mm -hmm. And that keeps me sane. And when I go to bed at night, I'm at peace. Okay. So you, of course, have very beautiful pieces here. And so do you want to show us anything in your studio? So these are some of my postcards that I've had for a while now. And um, these two are the market women that I've done. This market woman was outside of Lionel Roberts Stadium in St. Thomas. Mm -hmm. And this one is a friend's photo of a market woman in, um, I think, Nevis mm -hmm. or St. Lucia. And I mean, what I think is not stereotypical about my market women is that they're just real people doing their job, mm -hmm. okay? They're individualized, but I mean, they're looking at me or the viewer and they're displaying their wares selling their stuff this is what they do for a living mm -hmm. and they're still proud caribbean people doing what they do mm -hmm. it's just that simple this is actually a g-clay mm -hmm. um, i did this painting years ago and it was a large piece for a corporate office and i had a couple copies made in St. Thomas. So this is a copy of a original oil on canvas made with photo inks. So it looks like a painting, but it's not an original. But it is one of my favorite paintings. I like to play with light and shade and that's kind of the emphasis of the painting. Not necessarily the subject matter, but the sunlight coming through. And it didn't hurt that, you know, you get all the dried wrinkled banana leaves and the blossoms and the light bouncing off the bananas. So I loved it. One of my favorite pieces. I have a wide range of interests as you see. So it goes from the local animals to scenery, flowers, children, women I like to paint a lot. I haven't done a series of women in a while but that might be my next my next phase I'm thinking about that I've been sewing since I was a little girl and my mother was a seamstress so sewing is one of the things that I still do to unwind so in the gallery, along with the artwork and the crafts and the other things, I always have a collection of pieces that I make. 
What I make varies from year to year and there's always something in here um, in the line of clothing because I find it relaxing.